Welcome to the country roads of West Virginia in the gorgeous Allegheny Mountains for the final stop of the UCI Mercedes-Benz Cross Country World Cup. Now, if there's one thing we know about being in America, it's that the fans are absolutely wild. They are so noisy. And that's going to be so key to our riders today. After a long all season, no doubt they are going to want to race. Now, with Luana Lecomte already winning the overall and sitting this one out, it's going to be up to the rest of the women's field to put on a show. Not to mention Matthias Flukiger, who could actually take the overall in tonight's short track race. It's going to be massive. What a way to start the weekend for the end of the season. All that's left to say is, let's go racing. With newly crowned overall UCI World Cup winner Luana Lecomte not racing in snowshoe, the focus before the women's short track race shifted to the battle for second and third overall. With a handful of riders still in the running and 125 points awarded to the winner in the short track, this was going to be an interesting race. We go green and we're underway here for the last short track race of 2021. Evie Richards looking like she's going back a little bit and it's the world champion Cena Fry there at number four on the bike at the front. Jenny Risfeds made her intentions clear early on in the race as she took the lead with Cena Fry, Evie Richards and Jolanda Neff right behind her. Chid on by the enthusiastic crowd, the lead group stayed together throughout the first lap, with Risfeds still at the front. But then Australia's Rebecca McConnell moved past Risfeds, pushing hard at the front. Risfeds staying on her back wheel, and shortly after reclaiming the lead herself. At the start of lap three, the field was still close together, with everyone fighting for positions. And then, disaster struck for the 2019 overall UCI World Cup winner. Wow, look at that, Kate Courtney is on the ground. Luckily, Kate Courtney wasn't injured and could continue the race. At the front, it was Evie Richards' turn who moved past Jenny Risfeds and took over the lead. Taking different lines on the steepest climb, Richards and Risfeds were neck and neck, making the pace at the front. In lap six, the Swiss duo of Linda Indergand and Jolanda Neff mixed it up with Risfeds and Richards at the front, and the Olympic champion Neff moved into the lead. At the start of the final lap, Richards, Neff and Risfeds were right next to each other, and it was anyone's race. But then, Evie Richards landed the decisive blow. So Richards trying to make it happen from the outside, and she does! So Richards to the front now! Richards powered ahead with Neff and Risfeds fighting to stay on her back wheel, but the cross-country Olympic world champion was just too strong. And it's all out from the British rider. Here comes Evie Richards. She takes the win in snowshoe. I felt good in my warm-up. My heart rate looked good and the power looked good, so I was pleased, but you never know because everyone is so fast, don't you? But I suppose you just got to go as fast as you can and hope, hope that that's enough. <laughs> Evie Richards claimed her first short track race victory of the season, narrowly beating Yolanda Neff and Jenny Risfeds into second and third place, with four Swiss riders in the top ten. In the overall standings, Jenny Risfeds stayed in second place, with Evie Richards and Rebecca McConnell overtaking the absent Pauline ferrand Prevot to move into third and fourth, respectively. There's never a dull moment in Snowshoe. Guys, have you enjoyed that race? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it only gets more exciting from here. So Evie Richards laid down a marker. The men are up next. Can Matthias Flukiger take the overall here tonight? Let's find out. Snowshoe, West Virginia, and the last men's cross country short track race of the year. A full 125 points up for grabs. But the title was very much in the hands of Matthias Flukiger, who could wrap up his season's hard work if he finished in the top 12. And we go green and we're off then. All safely through there. Jordan Sewell, Goretzky, Nina Schuadres, dear. They're fighting for positions at the moment. It's hectic out there. It was an aggressive first lap with the lead chopping and changing hands, but nobody could establish themselves at the front. Brazil's Malik Avancini and Czech Andre Sink were the main pace setters in laps two and three, but France's Victor Koretsky wasn't going to be shaken off their tail very easily. Look how hard he's going on these climbs. Wow, look at this. Now it hurts in these legs of the riders. Matthias Flukiger had one thing on his mind as the pace ramped up front of lap four. 
125 points and offer for the win. Fluka could just need the top 12. The power and the strength of the front was incredible to witness, with any move made from the leaders instantly mirrored by the chasing pack. And everyone reacts, Bart. How nervous are they? In lap seven, the front five riders had finally formed some resemblance of a breakaway pack, but it was incredibly tight as the mist rolled in. With the final lap looming, everything was going to plan for the potential overall champion, Matthias Flugiger, who lay in fourth. On the final lap, the intensity of the race was incredible, as Avancini and Koretsky showed what world-class climbing is all about. Oh, Koretsky won't look back now, attacking hard on this climb. But Avancini managing to go with him. This is going to come down to a sprint finish, I think. Koretsky eventually called upon his special reserve tank as he powered away from Avancini for the victory. Avancini looks like he can't respond. And it's going to be France, it's going to be Victor Koretsky who's coming up to the line to take his first ever World Cup short track victory. Avancini took second and Swiss Filippo Colombo powered in at the very end to steal third place with a brilliant ride from short track world champion Christopher Blevins. But it was all about another Swiss rider who kept his cool throughout the race to ride home in fifth. Really great season. Uh, what we have done with the team, it's uh, really great. Uh, it was growing all year, from year to year, and now we did another step for this season. And yeah, a big congrats also to do my team, uh, to my sponsors, everybody which uh, believed in me. And uh, yeah, we did it, and it's really great. An exciting last short track race of the season for the men with Victor victorious here in Snowshoe. Henrique Avancini takes second and Filippo Colombo third. Andre Sink rode well throughout but slipped to a seventh place finish, which means he drops to third in the overall after Koretsky takes the win. Try to, to attack on the last lap and uh, I just uh, continue full gas until the end. And uh, yeah, I take uh, maybe three meter of uh, Avancini and uh, after it was uh, full, gas, full gas and uh, the crowd hit on fire, so it was amazing uh, the last uh, few meters for just uh, some, some nice uh, vibes and I'm uh, super happy to win my first uh, XCC uh, race. <laughs> it's Matthias Flukiger who rounds off a remarkable season and takes the overall crown in emphatic fashion with the final cross country still to come. Snowshoe does not disappoint, does it? You've got hectic racing, hectic weather, and of course the big American crowds, and Matthias Flukiger taking the overall with a race in hand. And then there's this guy. He only told me in Lenzerheide that he was going to win a short track before the race season was out, and he went and done it. But of course, the racing gets more exciting from here on out because we've got Sunday's Olympic distance. It's going to be live on Red Bull TV, so make sure you join us.